So, My Hero Academia Chapter 319 has officially released on Shonen and Jump. And let me just say that this video is going to primarily be discussing whether or not Deku is actually going to beat the heck out of his friends next chapter. So yeah, it's going to be very intense and we'll talk about it right after this intro. Hey guys, how's it going? It is your boy, Manga Man Drew, and today we are going to be discussing the differences between the My Hero Academia translations, between the official and unofficial translations, as well as talking about how Deku is going to be able to fight off his entire class. Because from what we saw in chapter 319, yeah, uh, Deku seems to be very serious about his goals of taking down all for one as well as preserving the smiles of his friends and close loved ones. But unfortunately, he seems to also be willing enough to defeat the people that he's trying to protect so that he can protect them. So yeah, Deku really isn't in the best state of mind and we're going to talk about how that may affect how he's going to fight his friends. But before we get into that, I'd like to ask you, if you haven't done so, to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you like My Hero Academia content. That's what I do. If that's what you enjoy, subscribe to my YouTube channel. And without the way, let's get right into it. So for starters, I'm going to talk about the differences between the official translations from Shonen Jump and the unofficial translations slash fan translations for this chapter. And generally, overall, My Hero Academia does fairly well when it comes to official translations being very close to the unofficial translations and vice versa, but there are some small differences that help clarify certain points in the chapter. One main difference comes after the uh, first part of this chapter where you have Bakugo explaining to his entire entire class a few days after Deku left UA about what's going on most likely how Deku is connected with All Might and uh, the situation as a whole because you have Jiro in the unofficial translations as well as most likely Ojiro as well bringing up the fact that classes have been suspended and that their graduation has also been delayed but when you look at the official translations uh, they do say that classes have been suspended but it says that they've just been kept from being first years for now. And the key difference is the difference between a graduation and promotion. Technically what they would have been doing is a promotion being promoted from class 1A to class 2A, but a graduation would be them actually finishing up the entirety of their hero course. Now, it could be possible that they would have graduated like two years early after everything that they've done within their first year so that they can be heroes faster, but I think it's more perceived to be that they were going to be promoted instead of graduating. It doesn't actually change the feel or the flow of the chapter and what these characters are saying. It's just a small difference when it comes to uh, what is actually happening in the story. Another difference when it comes to the official and unofficial translations comes from after they've tricked Endeavor into meeting Nezu and confronting Endeavor in Nezu's office where you have Shoto talking to his father about how they both promised they would stop Toya together and in the unofficial translations Endeavor says that uh, his sentiment alone saved uh, himself coming from Shoto but Shoto then chimes in about how he doesn't feel saved and then questions why Midoriya is an exception. That is what is said in the unofficial translations. But in the more official translations for Shonen Jump, Endeavor pretty much says the same thing, but instead of using the word saved, he says, your willingness alone means the world to me, to which Shoto responds with, well, it doesn't feel like that because he's not putting any action. And then he questions why a Midoriya is able to be a hero. And when it comes to how this is translated, it seems a little bit more muddled in the unofficial translation in comparison to the official translation because Shoto brings up the idea of being saved, but how Midoriya is the exception, but Midoriya isn't necessarily in a point of needing to be saved. He's going down a destructive path that he needs help with, but needing help is different from being saved. While in the official translation, 
it does tie more into the idea that Endeavor is not taking action to try and help Deku in the same way that the students could help him as well. So for the most part, the official translation just clarifies uh, what Shoto is saying in this moment a little bit better. And then from there, we only get a few more differences in translations that just clarifies what the characters are saying or who the characters are speaking to when it comes to the conversation that uh, Nezu is having explaining how Deku can come back to UA and how he would like for the students to be able to go out on their own to help Deku because Deku is a student of UA. And when it comes to the unofficial translation for how Nezu starts off that entire conversation, he brings up the fact that the students have grown up in the unofficial translations to Todoroki, but in the official translation, he brings up the idea that you have certainly matured Todoroki in reference to Endeavor. So in the unofficial translations, he's not necessarily talking to Endeavor Todoroki, but he is talking to Endeavor Todoroki in the official translations, and meaning that everything that he says is specifically to convince Endeavor and not necessarily the students. And then you have another difference in translations to clarify the point that Nezu is saying on this page, and that comes in when Nezu is talking about how Deku can come back to UA, because in the unofficial translations, he brings up that once you are accepted into UA, that UA will protect its students at all costs. But in the official translations, he basically says that once you are accepted into the school, you fall under their protection, not necessarily specifically as students, but anyone that becomes a part of UA is always going to be protected by UA. And this ties into what we see another difference when it comes to that in the next page, because in the next page where Nezu is talking about the security barrier and telling the students to bring back Deku in the official translations, in the unofficial translations, Nezu specifically asks the students to bring back Deku, but in the official translations, Nezu says to bring them back to us, not just referencing Deku, but also All Might. So this just means that possibly not only will the students be bringing Deku back to UA, but they may have a duty and a responsibility to also bring All Might back to UA. And that is going to be very interesting because the last time we saw All Might was against Stain. So potentially since we know that Ida and Shoto and Deku are going to be together, they may have another confrontation with Stain where it could end completely different. So that difference in translations could really affect how the story could move forward and how the students of Class 1A are also going to go on a search mission for All Might as well once they bring Deku back to UA. And now the final difference between the translations, and this is pretty much where I'm going to go into uh, the Deku versus Class 1A discussion, is that when we have the scenes where all of the Class 1A students bring down Dictator, and Bakugo begins to chastise Deku by saying that, is he smiling right now? In the unofficial translations, it seems to be very unclear about what his goal is, because he says, to be able to smile, for people to live in peace, I need to keep moving forward, so then after that he says all of you get out of my way but in the official translation after Bakugo once again chastises him Deku says those smiles everyone's peace of mind those are the reasons I need to keep going so pretty much get out of my way so if anything it is more clear what Deku is going to do in the official translations in comparison to the unofficial translations when it comes to his goals and what he wants to achieve. And from here, this is where it gets to the irony of it, where Deku wants to protect his smiles and keep everyone's peace of mind by keep moving forward on his own instead of allowing them to join him, which is what they believe is their peace of mind by not allowing Deku to keep going on this destructive path. So now here we're going to get into the discussion of whether or not Deku is crazy enough or sane enough not to or to fight his friends. And from what we see in this chapter, I think it's a mixture of both. 
we see that when Deku is preparing to fight his friends, we see that he's going full Kalen, which isn't something that you would normally see Deku do if he's trying to protect or if he's trying to get away. And from what we see with this perspective, he's willing to fight his own classmates as we see that he's looking at them with full cowling, with one for all fully up, as Bakugo, Ida, and Araka have to accept the fact that they may have to fight Deku. And many people may argue, well, it doesn't seem as if we've seen Deku in this crazy mange form for him to just up and fight his other classmates. But I would argue that it's not what we've seen like we've only seen him in the state for maybe a few chapters but it's the context of what brought him to the scene which makes it believable that he would actually do this because when it comes to deku he rarely if ever fights his friends the only time in which we've actually seen him take an initiative and like throw a punch at someone or to like physically harm someone is when he's trying to help them in one way or another specifically when it comes to his fight between Shoto where he throws a punch not only because it's in a tournament setting but he's trying to force Shoto to use his full potential as a way of saving him and the only other time he's done that is with Bakugo where he was trying to fight Bakugo because Bakugo was expressing his true feelings and that is something that he needed so Deku had to fight Bakugo in that moment to help him but in this situation He's not there to help his friends. It's actually the opposite way around. His friends are there to help him. And from what we've seen, Deku has been doing this on his own for maybe a few days or even a week or so. But we have to realize that even though we've only seen a chapter or two of him doing all of this on his own, within the world of My Hero Academia, it's been a longer period of time than we've seen it. And not only that, but he also hasn't been sleeping. He also hasn't been eating well. If we assume that this is all happening within a month after the Paranormal Liberation War arc and after Deku left UA, meaning that the students have been looking for him for about a couple of weeks or so after he left and after they got the permission from Nezu to go and look for Deku and All Might, he hasn't been sleeping well. He hasn't been eating. His wounds haven't healed. He is not physically ready and he's probably not mentally stable as well because if you don't get enough sleep you don't eat enough food if you don't treat yourself body it can affect with your mind and even a few days of just no sleep or insufficient sleep depending on the person that you are can really hamper your ability to think logically and cognitively and this has been happening to Deku for literal weeks and he's only a high school student so it makes sense that he may not be necessarily in the right state of mind because of the lack of sleep and the lack of nutritional food that he's eating. And even though there could be a possibility that he may not actually like fight them head on, but he may throw like powerful attacks at them like a full force air force to blow them away as a way of like making sure that they get out of his way. That is also a possibility, but I do not see it as Deku is never going to try and attempt to like fight his friends head on because we know that if he does, most likely he's gonna try to hold back. If anything, it could be what Mirio does against the class 1A. He hurts them in a way where they're down for the count, but doesn't like severely maim them. And I can see Deku doing the exact same thing, just laying hard hits on his fellow classmates not necessarily like sending them through walls or doing a lot of damage to them but hurting them enough for them to like not be able to get up immediately which gives him time to flee so i think that's kind of something that is going to go on if deku is willing to fight his own classmates that he's going to be holding his punches he's going to like make sure that he's not going to be hurting them a lot while he's fighting them but then it's the second part that's probably going to get him where because he's in this unstable state of mind there's going to be a punch that he isn't holding back that really does damage to someone not necessarily kill them but is going to severely hurt them and it's going to be at that moment that Deku may realize what he's doing is wrong and I've been talking a lot about Deku when it comes to him fighting class 1a but you also have to realize that if Deku was going to fight back he has to be serious because the students in class 1a 
are also going to be serious in fighting him. They most likely aren't going to be holding back, especially Bakugo. Heck, we've seen what Bakugo versus Deku fight is like when we saw them fight for the first time. Bakugo didn't hold back at all. He went full force on Deku to win that fight, literally throwing explosions at him. He may have been holding back a little bit because we've seen what he can do to Deku with a full force explosion, but we saw him go full force and Bakugo was the one to initiate it. So even when it comes to a fight like this, Deku was most likely not going to be holding back because class 1A is not going to be holding back. Bakugo is most likely going to be using his AP explosions or using his explosions just on Deku to try to beat him down so they can bring him back. Heck, Bakugo may be even trying to purposely injure Deku to the point where he can't move so it'll be easier to bring him back because he knows how determined Deku is. Heck, Ida could start kicking him at fast speeds to do the exact same thing. Shoto could freeze him or burn him. Basically, they don't want to hurt him, but they realize how determined Deku is, and they realize that the only way to stop him and to bring him down is to literally beat him down. And that is because he has too much motivation and drive to just be restrained. Sero, for instance, could try to restrain him with tape or if Deku tries to get away could try to bring him back with tape but Deku's probably gonna break it easily and when it comes to other characters like Sato could go in a one-on-one -on -one with him in a full force fight but by doing so he has to damage Deku and I think the idea is that both sides in one way or another are going to hurt the other to try and show their point and to emphasize their point the only difference is even the class 1a students are extremely most likely to hold back more often but because Deku is not in the right state of mind he's most likely to go all out on accident and lead to one of his classmates truly getting hurt because we also have to remember looking at Deku right now he looks like a monster if you look at him from a certain angle he looks like a monster and it would just make a whole lot of sense that in his fight against his friends not only does he look like a monster, he also sort of acts like a monster and that he will eventually realize what he's doing is wrong. So this fight could take place over the entirety of next chapter 320, or we could just get a lot of it in 320 and get the conclusion in 321 where either Deku was going to completely, not necessarily annihilate his class, but put them all down and get away, which I think is very unlikely no, or Class 1A defeats Deku and literally drags him back through his unconscious body back to UA and talk to him there. Probably the most likely scenario is that Deku may be fighting. He does attack his friends. He doesn't use full force on them, but he has a moment where he accidentally goes full 100%, fully hurts, damages, or knocks out one of his friends. And there could be a point where he realizes, oh no, I did something bad. But because his mind is so twisted, he's like, but I have to do it. But I hurt his friend, my friend, but I have to do it. But I hurt my friend. He has this moment of conflict that basically breaks him. And then he may say, okay, I have to defeat my friends to protect them. And then he just passes out. Or at that moment where he is distracted and is unable to think and is unable to act, then the rest of class 1A takes him out and shows him, Deku, look what you've done. Look at what you've become. And then he realizes, oh, I've become a monster. So there are many ways that this fight can really go out. And I think that a lot of the characters uh, can, in one way or another, counter Deku in a way uh, when it comes to his quirks, because they may not necessarily know what his quirks are, but they can uh, counter them from what we know. Uh, he has Fajin. Uh, I wouldn't say that's something that a lot of the classmates can uh, actually counter, but we do have a lot of classmates that can produce like a lot of power. Bakugo can produce a lot of explosions. Shoto can produce ice and fire. Momo can create cannons out of her body. Ida can run super fast and kick very hard. There are probably people that can compete with Deku with power and even with one for all in Fajin, that may cancel it out. But then we also know that he has a smoke screen, which he could use smoke screen to try and escape. But then, like I said, there are characters who can move extremely fast and like disperse a smoke screen. 
and we can see that it's still raining in this chapter and as we learned a few chapters ago smokescreen is not very effective in the rain so that's going to be a detriment so smokescreen can't really be used uh black whip will probably be deku's best choice if he wants to escape or restrain his classmates because we know he can restrain multiple people at once but then like i said you have like powerhouses like bakugo and shoto that can probably break out of it even uh sato can heck you can even have a uh, coda even in the smokescreen have like the animals come and like brush away the smokescreen and even you have Sero, who also has the ability to restrain uh, Deku. It may not be as strong as Black Whip when it comes to restraining, but it's still something that can restrain him. Heck, we saw Sero restrain Shoto for a few seconds, you know, before he broke out. So most likely Deku will break out of it. But still, uh, Suyu uh, could wrap her tongue around him. And if he tries to break out of that, it will damage her. So that's something else that they have. And then when it comes to a uh, float, I mean, we do have characters that can fly. Technically, Bakugo could fly. So if Deku tries to use float, Bakugo could get there. As well as Uraraka, who also has zero gravity. Uh, also, you know, she can make literally everyone float. And certain characters like a uh, Froppy can like jump around the buildings and have somewhat synonymous like abilities to move like Deku in the air, a uh, Sero as well. So there are a lot of characters that can get airbound in one way or another to catch Deku that way. The only thing that Deku really has above all of them is Danger Sense, but here's where it's probably going to be interesting. If Deku, even though he has Danger Sense, that Danger Sense may never go off in this entire fight, and that if that is the case, there will be a few confirmations with that, but it means A, that he, that may actually be the reasoning why Deku stops, where he's going full force, he's attacking his classmates, not to hurt them or anything, but just to put them down, but he's realizing, wow, my danger sense go isn't going off, why isn't it going off? Oh, it's because they aren't really a danger to me because I perceive them as my friends. Oh, uh, maybe I probably shouldn't be doing this. So maybe Danger Sense is what makes Deku realize what he's doing isn't necessarily right. And then that ties into the vestiges and them finally being able to talk to him and say, Hey, Deku, maybe you shouldn't be fighting your friends. Yeah, Deku, you probably shouldn't be doing this. Eh, I'm the second user, but I mean, yeah, you probably shouldn't fight your friends. So that it could lead into something like that. Or maybe Danger Sense only goes off with the when the UA trader attacks Deku and we later learn on that in the fight, like after Deku has come back, after Deku does this, after Deku does that, after Deku finally arrives at UA and showers and does everything and he talks to everyone in class uh, 1A, he's like, thanks guys. Uh, by the way, X, why did my danger sense go off with you? And he'd be like, oh, wasn't everyone trying to fight you? It's like, yeah, but it didn't go off with everyone. But weirdly enough, it went up with you. What is up with that? And then that's the reveal of the UA trader. Maybe, I don't know. That's a far stretch. It is a possibility. It would be cool if his danger sense was only able to pick up enemies, whether he perceives them as enemies or not. That would be cool or perceive them as attacks or not. As we get the reveal of what danger sense actually is from the uh, fourth teacher, I believe. Yeah. But yeah, I think this this fight between Deku and Class 1A is going to be extremely interesting, extremely amazing, and extremely action-packed because we're going to get to see both sides of the coins and we could potentially see both sides try to hurt each other. We could see both sides trying to uh, make sure that their other one is safe and just bring them back or leave. Or we could see one side going full force and the other side restraining themselves leading to probably where the most obvious outcome would come from because me personally i do think deku is willing to attack his friends not to like severely maim them or anything but to do like what mirio did and just put them down long enough for him to escape or at least restrain them with black whip and by doing so begin like escaping and then releasing them and just keep doing that so it's very interesting uh that's kind of my thoughts about the fight and what it could be i may make another prediction video about what exactly is going to happen when it comes to who's going to do who but i kind of did that in this video so i don't really have a whole lot more to say about this fight all i know it's going to be hype so yeah that's pretty much what i have to say about this fight and in, in this discussion video so uh what did you think of the chapter and what do you think of this discussion uh do you think that deku is in the right state of mind that he won't hurt his friends or do you think that he's gone far beyond that and is willing to take out his friends put them down not like kill but severely hurt them if it means that he can protect them in the long run so it could be that deku is under the perception that the ends justify the means so hurting his friends now 
justifies it later on when he's able to protect them all by defeating all for one that could be the thought process that he's thinking and some people may agree with that but just leave your thoughts down in the comments down below what you think uh deku is going to do next chapter and if he's going to actually fight his friends or try to escape as well as leave a like on this video if you liked it subscribe to my youtube channel if you like this type of my hero academia content and hit that bell to be notified for whenever i upload so yeah do all that cool jazz and hopefully i'll be able to catch you in my next video goodbye